Hi. Oh, wait, I do have to introduce myself, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Tatiana, and today we're going to be making pineapple buns. So the first thing to know about pineapple buns is that there's no pineapple in this, and they're actually called pineapple buns because of this sort of pineapple-like texture that's on top. Pineapple buns are one of my favorite things to get at the Chinese bakery uh, ever since childhood. And usually they're unfilled, but I really like them when they're filled with custard, which is what we're going to do today. It's a really great textural combination of the crunchy top and the soft bun. But I think when you have the custard inside, it just adds just a little something extra. I don't know. It just, I feel like it's just this really delightful thing to have for breakfast or a snack. So to start off, you're going to make a cookie topping, and it's pretty much this crispy cookie that goes on top of the soft, fluffy milk bread bun. And so to start with that, you're going to cream the butter and sugar, putting in this soft, soft butter and sugar, creaming things. Um, and you're going to do this for about a minute or two until it's smooth. Once that's nice and smooth, you're gonna add egg yolk and milk. As a heads up, this recipe uses a lot of egg yolks, so definitely make sure you save your egg whites. And you can use them in recipes like our almond cloud cookies or vanilla wafers. You're gonna continue beating this until the egg and milk are incorporated. I think it's good. I'm gonna use 120 grams of bread flour. And then you're gonna add 28 grams of Baker's Special Dry Milk. And lastly, the baking powder, baking soda, and salt. You're gonna mix this until it's combined, and if it doesn't come together, you can just add a little bit of milk, teaspoon by teaspoon, until it all comes together. I think this is ready. So you're going to want to form this into a pretty even log so that it's the same thickness all around. I promise this is going to turn into a log. This dough is very easy to work with. So I can just use my hands here and just form it into an even log. And since it's not that hot in here, this is pretty easy to do. If it's a little bit warmer in your kitchen, you might actually want to fold over the parchment and sort of shape it that way because sometimes the butter will get all over your hands. So once you get it into a log like this, it's ready for the fridge. So I'm just going to be rolling this back up for the fridge and testing it. Like giant tootsie roll. In order to make milk bread, the first thing you have to do is to make tang zhong, and that is basically a flour, water, and milk slurry that you're going to cook over the stove. So I'm going to add 43 grams of milk, 43 grams of water, and 14 grams of flour. So the difference with tangjong is that having this sort of pre-cooked flour mixture really helps keep your bread super fresh. You might also recognize it from our perfectly pillowy cinnamon rolls recipe. And just like those rolls, these buns or whatever bread recipe you're making them with will stay fresh for days, like five days, a whole week. So before you turn the heat on, you want to whisk this mixture really well to get out any lumps. Yeah, so you definitely don't want this to boil. Um, it should really just be at a pretty low simmer. And as you're whisking it, it's going to thicken. It's almost going to look like kind of liquidy mashed potatoes. Um, so it's going it, to, because it has this flour in it, it is going to thicken up. And so this is, yeah, I think this is ready. So you can see as you're whisking it, you can see the bottom of the pan. It's thick. And you just want to let that cool down before you add it to your dough. So we've got the cooled down tangjong already in the bowl. And then you're going to add 300 grams of bread flour. And then you're going to take 14 grams of the dry milk. And then you're going to add your sugar. And then have one large egg some whole milk, 
yeast and salt. And the last thing is the melted butter. Uh, you're gonna mix this in a stand mixer for about 15 minutes. And you wanna do this until the dough is like really smooth and elastic and when you touch it, it should just be a little bit tacky. You don't really want the dough to be sticking to your hands. It should be really easy to handle. And now we wait, but don't walk away. You want to keep an eye on your stand mixer and your dough. Now's the time. Now's when you cut to 15 minutes later. <laughs> okay, it's nice and smooth now. So now, now that this dough is ready, we're gonna form it into a ball and let it rise. Form that into a ball, and then pop it right in there. So once you've got this in the bowl, you can cover it and let it rise for about 60 minutes to 90 minutes until it's about doubled in size and puffy. Okay. So we're gonna deflate this dough and divide it into 12 equal pieces. And when you're dividing them, they should be around 55 grams each. So you can start by, I don't know, I feel like everyone does this kind of differently. I like to just do, split it into four and then split it into that into thirds, and then just kind of see how close I got. Oh, 58, that's not bad. <laughs> so what I really like about this milk bread recipe is that it's really versatile. And so yes, you can make this recipe with it. Uh, we also have some recipes on our site for a black sesame coconut bun, or you can even make these into dinner rolls. Um, it's just such a versatile dough that once you make it once, you're gonna realize you can make buns, rolls, loaves, cinnamon rolls, uh, lots of different things. So don't let this be the only recipe you make with this dough. Now we're going to shape these into balls. So you want to pinch in the corners like this and then turn it over and then just sort of using the surface tension, make it into a really nice ball. So now that these are ready, you're just going to want to cover them for 40 to 50 minutes or until puffy. Okay. So now that these are proof, they're ready for their cookie topping. So let's go make those now. So now I've got this dough. I'm gonna unwrap it. It's been in the fridge, just firming up. And so I, just, I like to use a bench scraper. Here you're just gonna be dividing it into 12 equal pieces. And again, like you can use a scale here, but I don't really think you need to. They're, if, you, if you are though, they're about 30 grams each. So similar to a concha or crackalen, you're gonna shape these into discs to put on top of the buns. So to do that, I just like to put them on a piece of parchment, put another piece on top and just flatten it with my palm. So once these are all shaped, you will apply an egg yolk wash to the tops of these buns to adhere these on top. And then afterwards, they get another brush of egg yolk on top. So that'll let it brown really nicely in the oven, but also contribute to that really distinct yellow color that most pineapple buns have. So after you've finished the egg wash, they're ready for the oven. So to make the custard, you'll have to use egg yolks, flour, milk, sugar, cornstarch, and salt. I'm gonna put the egg yolks in first. And remember, save your whites. And you've got a tablespoon flour two tablespoons of milk, quarter cup sugar, tablespoon of cornstarch. So you're just gonna whisk that up until it's nicely incorporated. Okay, so once that's thoroughly mixed, you can add the milk and butter into a pot. So I'm gonna add butter and milk. And you want to bring that to a simmer over medium-low heat. Once the butter melts and it comes to a simmer, we're going to pour just a little bit into that egg mixture so that it tempers nicely. And the importance of tempering is that you don't want your eggs to curdle. So that's why you want to bring some of that hot mixture into that room temp mixture. So now that the butter's melted, it's ready to be tempered with the eggs. So I'm going to take this off the heat. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this to temper the eggs and just keep whisking. And add a little more. 
So do not skip this step. It's, don't just feel like you can pour the eggs into there. It will be a curdled mess, I promise. Okay, so I'm, just, I'm gonna put this back on the stove and we're gonna pour this back into the hot buttermilk mixture and just keep whisking. So at this point, you don't wanna walk away. You wanna just keep whisking. Otherwise, again, you're gonna get those egg curdles. And so you just wanna keep whisking this until it's thick like pudding. So we're almost there. You can kind of tell that this is looking a little bit more pudding-like. It's getting thicker. Yep, that's ready. So you can take that off the heat. And so now that your custard has thickened, you can just add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk that in, and then afterwards, you can just transfer this to a bowl to fully cool. So these are all baked, and you can absolutely stop here and just eat them warm out of the oven, but I really prefer them with custard, and it's really easy to do that. So all you have to do is take a chopstick and poke a little hole. And since the inside is so soft, you don't actually need to scoop out any of the dough. You can just go ahead and insert the pastry tip right into that hole and fill it with about two tablespoons of custard. Here they are. <laughs> We've got unfilled ones, filled, and if you wanna eat them like you're in a Hong Kong cafe, split them like a hamburger bun and put a big old pat of butter inside. Trust me, it is so good. Okay, I don't know which one to eat. Um, let's go with, ooh, this is tough, okay. Mm. I don't know if my mic picked up the crunch, but it's there. <laughs> so we've got the fluffy bun, the crispy cookie topping, and the custard, and it's just, it's so good. So for the full recipe, find it on kingarthurbaking.com. Like and subscribe.